This video follows on from the first video, which has gone through the process of how to download a code plug, how to add your call sign and DMR ID, and how to write that code plug into your radio. We're now going to work on, a, on the principle of changing a code plug and talking to you about how code plugs work and how you can make changes to best work with you. Now we're going to work on a principle that uh, we're going to, that you're bringing the radio to your shack and we want to make some changes to the code plug. So what we're going to do is pr plug our, our radio into the computer. Again, remember the radio must be turned on and the USB cable must be plugged into its own USB device on the computer, not into a hub. It will not work properly if you use a hub and you risk corrupting the information. So once it's plugged into the computer, hit read and we will read the information from the radio. And I would always recommend at any point, every time you do this, save a copy of the pl code plug to your computer. So it's the 28th of January, so I'm going to call it 2016-01-28A. And then if I happen to make some changes uh, as we go, I'm going to keep saving it and adding a different letter. That's the way I do it. But like I said, the program can crash on you if you make a mistake. Uh, the program has been known to crash, which is very annoying. And if you haven't been saving everything, you're going to get quite upset, especially if you've done a lot of uh, a lot of changes. Now, one of the things that we get asked a lot is how do you set the time? Because setting the time and date in the radio uh, or on the radio itself is, is very, very complicated. Um, but there's actually a way of doing it. You can do it up here in the menus come to edit and there's a time setting option in the menu you can click on this read it in other words it will tell you what's the what's on the radio at the moment it tells you what your computer is saying the current date and time is and by hitting right it will update the radio's date and time to whatever you have at the moment so if you've got some really spurious date and time on there at the moment that's the way of synchronizing the date and time with your computer Okay, so we've now got our code plug loaded up directly from the uh, the the radio itself, and we're going to talk you through all the various options. So we're going to start at the very top. Now, obviously, in basic information, this allows you to change the frequency range of the radio. Please don't do that. Leave it as standard, otherwise you will screw your radio up. General settings. Uh, now, again, talking from the right-hand side and coming down, you should have your radio name, your radio ID uh, showing up here on the, the right-hand side. Obviously, again, this is a test, uh, test rig that I'm using, so, of course, there's nothing in here. Most of these settings that you see down the right-hand side, you will not need to change. You don't need to make any changes to any of these. Now, what I will say, one very useful thing that you might want to do, and a lot of people do turn this on, I certainly always use it, is the channel-free indication tone. Very useful tone. It bleeps at you to tell you that the radio is uh, is available to, to transmit, uh, and a lot of people find that very useful, so I turn that on here. Um, but uh, other than that, this 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 screen you can pretty much leave as per standard. Uh, menu items. This allows you to turn on or turn off the items that are available to the radio user. So if, for example, you're programming the radio for somebody else and you don't want them to have the ability to uh, to program the radio for themselves, you don't want them to have the ability to manually uh, manually input frequencies or um, adjust the power settings of the radio or whatever, you can turn these various different functions on or off. Um, just bear that in mind, though, that obviously if you do turn them off, you, you're going to suddenly go well where is the function I've lost I've lost menus on the radio but uh, this is just basically what this does and for those of you that are never going to use text messaging you can turn things like that off um, which uh, which again might be very useful for you if you don't plan to ever do text messaging um, then then obviously you can turn the whole menu off um, and things like that 
Button definitions is the next menu. Now this one does take a few moments to load, but basically this allows you to customize the various different buttons that you will see on the radio. So on the side of the Retavis RT3, uh, there is a button above and a button below the uh, PTT and you can select what they do. Now as standard, I always set a short press the top button as a zone select button so each time you push it it moves from zone to zone so zone one then zone two then zone three and so on and the lower button the one underneath the PTT I uh, use as a setting a, a toggle between high and low power um, I don't really ever use these at the uh, the long press buttons um, but you know you're more than welcome to, to have a look at these do bear in mind the emergency modes uh, the Phoenix network and most of the other networks Southwest cluster for example uh, require you not to not to be using emergency buttons and not actually having the emergency uh, thing set up so I would avoid having uh, those set in case you accidentally hit it a lot of people use uh, these buttons as well for activating scan um, I don't use the scan function I'll explain a little bit about that in a moment um, but uh, some people do uh, and like it but uh, there you go you can turn scan on or off from here uh, one touch access stuff so you can set up certain information so uh, back up here you can set for example one touch access and then in this example uh, you can either set it to call somebody or set a text message uh, so just by uh, in this example by holding that button down uh, for a thousand milliseconds um, you, you would get a, a text message being sent to uh, that person um, again are you ever going to use it up to you it's good to play with to, to experiment with perhaps but uh, like I said it, it's probably not something you're going to use very often Let's go into text message. Now, obviously, text messaging is, is one thing. You can sit there and type your own messages. This basically allows you to set up uh, some standard default text messages. Now, the Phoenix Network do support text messaging to a degree, and they do advocate that you can send text messages to people. So if you know that somebody else is on the same channel as you, but perhaps you don't have the opportunity to talk, uh, you might want to send a text message to them uh, and tell them to QSY to a different channel. Uh, I can't quite see the reasoning behind that. Uh, some people use it very heavily, but there we are. It's it's a it's a function that's available. Uh, should you should you want to have a go and play with it? Privacy settings we don't use um, really on on DMR anyway, so I'm going to skip past this one. And the digit emergency system, again, we're not going to be touching anything on that because we don't use it. Now, digital contacts we do use. And uh, uh, to briefly explain, uh, you need to have two types of digital contacts set up. Now, for every talk group, that is known as a group call. <coughs> uh, so talk group one would be group call number one. Group uh, uh, Talk group number two is group uh, group call number two uh, 22 is, is 22 and so on and so forth very very straightforward you need to set that up for every talk group that you're ever going to need to access on the radio um, so you'll see that they're all programmed in so they're all the most of the Phoenix ones I think there's some further down the, the yeah some here look which have fallen out of order uh, and you can choose if you like to set up individual ones for different people so you can set up a person's call sign and name uh, with their DMR ID which is all public domain information or you can ask them for it and that will mean that that information will come up on the display so rather than just seeing that at the moment user 2352072 is talking to you, you you're actually going to see their, their call sign and name which can be quite useful um, but obviously you need to set those up in in here as private calls call receive tone don't worry too much about that unless you're going to be doing direct mode stuff so if you're going to be doing a lot of simplex work um, you, you you don't really need to use call receive tones and that's the only time you would ever need it if you come back in video three we'll move on to digital rx group lists <laughs> 